Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Romnik Regalario and in today's video, we're going to talk about a sterile processing technician. So, us as a sterile processing technician, we reprocess surgical instruments that are used after surgeries. So, um, we receive them on a decontamination area, we decontaminate them and put them in a washer disinfector so it's safe for us to hold them and assembly to set it up, set it up for a specific surgeries and sterilize it um, on a different types of uh, sterilizations. So let's start with what types of instruments or equipments do we reprocess. So there's three, three there's a three types: uh, non-critical, semi-critical, and critical. So non-critical equipments are equipments that are doesn't have to go inside the body. So pretty much just on the skin. So let's say those. Um, touches only skin so let's say those um, SCD machines, IV pumps, breast pumps so those are only uh, equipments that um, touches the skin it doesn't really have to go inside the body so those are processed um, through uh, disinfection and so the next uh, instrument are um, semi-critical instruments so an example of those are flexible endoscopes so those are those scopes that are used for bronchoscopy, uh, colonoscopy, or uh, gastroscopy. So bronchoscopy is to uh, check uh, your lungs, and gastroscopy is to uh, check your um, upper uh, intestine, and colonoscopy is to check your uh, lower intestine, which is um, a flexible camera that goes um, inside your rectum to visualize the intestine. And um, the next one and the common instruments that we reprocess are the critical instruments. So those are the instruments that go on a um, not regular opening in, in the body. So let's say uh, those uh, instruments that are uh, used to do a open heart, heart surgery, um, a lap lap laparotomy, and uh, appendectomy. So any any types of surgery that has to made an artificial opening. So these are actually our, our sample of those. So we have uh, scissors, forceps or clamps, and um, grasping forceps, needle holders, micro needle, needle holders, wire cutters, and all kinds of forceps. And also retractors, knife handles, curettes, and uh, elevators. So these are just examples of the critical instruments that we reprocess. So what type of sterilization or disinfection process do we do? Uh, so there's there's a lot of kinds of sterilization process, but there's um, only a few commonly used sterilization or disinfection process. So these are low level disinfection, high level disinfection, um, esteroid, which or also known as hydrogen peroxide, and uh, esteem sterilization. So let's start with a uh, low level disinfection. So low level disinfection is, uh, is used on non-critical equipments uh, like on those uh, breast pumps, SCD machines. So we just wipe them down, wipe them down with, a high le with low level disinfection. And for those flexible scopes, um, colonoscopes and gastroscopes are uh, commonly uh, high level disinfected through um, there's a machine, uh, we, we, we use an Evotech to reprocess them through high-level high disinfection. There's also an, a different flexible scope that um, uh, you be being sterilized through hydrogen peroxide, which is um, a cystoscope. So those are uh, processed in hydrogen peroxide and everything else that is uh, heat-sensitive. Heat so all the heat-sensitive um, instruments are being processed on a uh, hydrogen peroxide because that's a low temp uh, sterilization. So another example of those uh, instruments are those uh, bipolar forceps. So those are processed on a low temp sterilization or steroid or hydrogen peroxide. Um, so the last thing and most common way of sterilization is a pre-vac sterilization. So those uh, these instruments, those are commonly uh, used instruments, uh, metal instruments, so those are uh, the critical instruments that commonly used in the surgery. So scissors, 
clamps, forceps, needle holders, elevators, retractors. So those are process and uh, steam sterilization. Let's also talk about the workflow and sterile processing department and the other um, assignment and sterile processing department. So the workflow starts in decontamination area where the use surgical instruments are brought from the OR by either the nurses or surgical techs or sometimes we have to get the instruments from the OR and take it to the decontamination area. And so we hand wash them and push them to washer disinfector and from washer disinfector it goes out to the uh, clean area where the assembler will assemble the set to its uh, specific tray for a specific surgery. So after assembling, you label it uh, by that uh, specific uh, set name. Then either you box it or you wrap it. And then after wrapping, you sterilize it by either um, uh, low-level uh, sterilization or steam sterilization. And then the next one is after the sterilization, you will pull out the load, lock the BI. BI is to test the, the sterilization process. Sometimes that biologic, it's, it's a biological um, test to, uh, to test if the, the process has passed the parameters. So before um, the incubation of the biological was uh, seven days, one day, hours, three hours, but now um, at so mo most hospitals use the three hours, but uh, some hospitals use now the shorter, less than uh, 30 minutes, 24 minutes to be specific, which is really helpful because you can read the biological and find out if the process has passed in a quicker time. Um, and so after that, um, we would release the load to the um, case peak case picking area or store storage area to um, to be uh, put away or to be send sent to the OR to be used in a surgery. So another assignment in the store processing department are uh, reprocessing the ultrasound probe. It's reprocessed through um, through high level disinfection. And another one is uh, the flexible scopes, which is also uh, Reprocess through high level disinfection and outside clinics. Um, so, sample of those are suctions, uh, nasal specs, and ear tips. So, those are coming from um, HNS or ENT uh, department and some vaginal specs and some um, forceps. Those are coming from um, OBGYN uh, department. And also, we do the rounding in the hospital to pick up those. Um, IV pumps, SED pumps, breast pumps to reprocess uh, through uh, uh, low-level disinfection. And also there's another assignment which is um, case cart. I mean, yeah, case cart. So you pick the case, you pick all the instruments for this specific case and get it ready for the, for the OR to be used. And also the crash cart. Some hospital doesn't do it, but some does. So if um, if your hospital uh, does it, then you, you have to be trained for that too. So how long does it take to become a sterile, pro sterile processing? So the answer is to that is it depends. But my advice, if you are ever going to uh, go for a sterile, a sterile processing, please make sure that the school has a affiliated hospital for you to go to clinical, otherwise don't go to a school if they don't have a clinical place for you after you have your you get your license because i have a lot of people that i know that finish um, school got their license but weren't able to work because they don't have a clinical hours and it's really hard for you to get a clinical hours unless uh, the school already have a setup with a hospital for you to um, do the, your cl clinical uh, no hospital will take you if you don't have uh, if your school don't place you to that hospital uh, because of the insurance uh, um, insurance re reason. So, so the class takes about ten weeks uh, to finish. Um, 
when I did it, it was two times a week, about five hours a day. I was finished for uh, 10 weeks. And then after that, you're gonna have, you might have to wait for your clinical. That's okay if you have to wait. Even if you have to wait a year, that's fine. Because usually your, um, your uh, license would, be, would last for five years. For the first license that you will get. Um, we'll talk about that later on in this video. Um, so it, sometimes it, it'll take you um, long. Sometimes you have you, you get to do your clinical as soon as spa, uh, as soon as possible, as soon as you get your license, which is really good if you you'd be able to do that. And another thing, when you do your clinical, make sure you get 400 hours at least, and um, don't rush to you know after your um, 400 hours you'll you'll uh, you'll uh, leave the department already or you know you don't want to do it anymore so if you are in clinical you have to make sure that you you are uh, willing to learn everything and you are willing to put more hours because some that, once you do your clinical you already have your foot inside a department so you have to show off that you are a hard-working person and you are willing to learn because every day you, you're going to be learning a new thing in the department so you have to um don't 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 rush and some some school uh, might say oh you you only we only provide 200 hours or 240 hours if you can please negotiate with school that you want to have at least 400 hours and if you are able to volunteer more hours then keep volunteering until you find a job so while you are doing the volunteering uh, keep applying and the the best way to get a job is apply through um agency and if you are having trouble with applying uh, through agency please let me know i could help you i know a few agency that um, would accept um, new grads um, with a pay so just let me know so um, the clinical hours would last about uh, another 10 weeks but this one 10 weeks if you are working uh, or putting hours uh, full-time hours so that means eight hours a day for hour, 40 hours a week and after 10 weeks it will come up to um, 400 hours so 400 hours at least 400 hours minimum and um, sometimes if if you already did the the class got your license but the school doesn't have a clinical hours then check around and maybe but maybe check around the agencies that probably uh, or may be able to put you uh, on an assignment outside the state um, I know some people did it already, so you can do it too. Just don't be scared to do some traveling outside your uh, own state um, because it's it's better to go out for a little bit and then just come back once you get your um, your experience, paid experience, and um, you have the knowledge already to be in the field and get paid more. So where would you get your certification? So there's a certification board that I know. There's there's two of them. Uh, one is C C CBSPD and the other one is Isham. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right though. So C CBSPD is a certification board of external processing and distribution. And if you get that license, you will be a certified external processing and distribution technician. Uh, most likely if you're from California, that's the license that you will get because I'm from California and that's the license that I got. So, um, and the good thing about CBSPD it the it lasts for five years it va it's valid for five years and after five years you have to accumulate 100 hours for you to be able to renew it and um another the another one is isham uh, i think it's a international association of healthcare uh, central material management i think that's what it stands for i'm not exactly sure but it sounds like sounds like it anyway so um if you be, if you have that license um, you will become a cert certified registered uh, central service technician but that certification would only last uh, for a year so i started from uh, C C B C B S P D, uh and then after five years i didn't renew i didn't renew that license anymore and then i moved to isham isham is only valid for a year but then they only require 12 units to um, to renew your license which is uh, if you are working uh, continuously in one facility or any facility you would be able to accumulate that uh, CEUs that you need to um, to um, uh, renew your license 
and you there's ad, another advancement that you could do with a boat light license you can be a certain uh, certified instrument specialist, uh, certified and this flexible endoscopic uh, reprocessor and uh, CHL. I'm not sure ex exactly what it stands for, but it's it's uh, regarding um, leadership. So if you want to step forward, that's another thing you want to look up uh, look up to and uh, try to learn, uh, study that uh, course, and then get the license. It's not really required for you to have it. But then if, if you have that, it, it, it's a plus on your resume. So where can you work uh, as a sterile processing technician? So as a sterile processing technician, you mainly work at the hospital or sometimes you can work also at a small clinic that do uh, reprocess reprocessing um, uh, clinic uh, instruments like VAD specs and um, let's say flexible scopes. So those are like in a, in a GI clinic, you could be uh, doing that just a flexible scopes or in a GYN clinic you can be just reprocessing vaginal specs or uh, uh, vaginal uh, probes um, but if you ever work in the hospital um, be, working in the hospital is a very good thing because um, there's a lot of benefits in working in the hospital and the number one benefit in working in, working in the hospital is um, medical medical insurance um, for you and your family because you know now nowadays, especially over here in in, in America or in, or in California, uh, medical insurance is very expensive, and it's almost you don't want to get sick because you'll know if you get sick after you get better, you'll get sick of your bills too. So that's another thing that you wanna uh, another reason why you wanna be in the medical field, and you don't have to be specific and start, start processing as long as you'll be working in the hospital. So the, the medical, the dental. Uh, dental is also really good because you want to make sure you, um, you'll have a coverage uh, for your uh, dental works which uh, could be expensive too. I mean most of the companies uh, offer uh, medical and dental but then working in the hospital always have a better coverage than you know other companies or other field that would offer those. And also the vision, vision they also uh, uh, offer those to, to, to the employees. And uh, in addition to that, they offer uh, PTOs and sick times or um, paid uh, family leave and as well as um, paid holidays. Uh, some, most hospitals pay the, um, <coughs> all, the, uh, all the U.S. holidays, but not all. Some of them doesn't, but uh, even if uh, they don't cover all those, um, it's, it's still a... Uh, good that they cover um, most of the holidays. Another benefits that they offer are um, uh, voluntary uh, benefits such as life insurance, you know, just uh, extra coverage just in case. And um, the retirement plan, which is if you've been, if you stay within that company for the specific amount of time, then you will get res um, uh, retirement from them as well as um, medical coverage uh, lifetime. I don't know how um, if everybody's gonna doing that, but I know if you find that uh, hospital that offers that, that would be a really good uh, deal for you. So you don't have to worry about when you retire about uh, medical uh, medical stuff. And the last thing that I could think of is a four hundred one k. So if you into a retirement uh, investing in your retirement, um, that's another thing also that you um, benefit for you. That's what I meant. So um, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next video.